Hello, I'm so glad you're here. And because you're here, I hope this means that you and your family are well. And that is something for which we can be thankful. My name is Deneen Matsuda and I'm an elementary teacher. This year I get to work with wonderful fourth graders. And this is a channel where we are learning how to grow in our love and confidence in math. And for those of you who've already subscribed, thank you so much. And if you haven't, I hope you will join our little but growing family by pressing the subscribe button. And at the end of the video, I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up, which simply means that you liked it and found something that you can do in your class this week. Today's game is a differentiation on the game that we played last week called Hot Cards. So if you didn't watch that video, I hope you'll stop now and go back and watch it and then rejoin me here. Now, Hot Cards every year is always a class favorite. It, students love this game, always. And when our daughter, Annie, was a very early mathematician, she and I were playing. And I can't remember what number it was, but let's say it was five. And she was studying her cards and studying her cards, and she didn't obviously have a five, I could tell. And, and then she said, but what if I could do something to my cards to make it a five? Would, would that be okay? said, yes, that would be wonderful. And that is the day that Hot Cards changed to Hot Cards Extreme. And I've been teaching it that way exclusively ever since. So thank you very much, Annie. Here's how we play Hot Cards Extreme. We're still in groups of two, three, and four, and we're still using five cards. But we're going to do things to our numbers to our cards to try to eliminate as many as we can. Remember, it's that discard pile that you want to be bigger than anybody else's discard pile at the end of the game. So in this case, let's pretend I rolled a four. I have a four. Or no, I don't have a four. I don't have a four. Do I have to yell hot cards or say hot cards and let it go to somebody else? Or is there something I could do to my number cards to create a four? Well, I can see I could do 10 minus six. That would be four. And I got rid of two cards. Is there anything else I could do? Oh, I could do 11 minus seven. And that would be four also. And I eliminated four cards, so now I would replace with four cards. The students always ask me when they're going to replace, if, if one of the cards that they drew was a four, could they count that into their discard pile? I always say no, but it's up to you. We can change the rules as we go. Let's say I have these cards, and remember I've rolled a four. Is there something I can do to manipulate these cards to discard three cards. Seven minus six is one, and one times four is four. Three cards discarded. Is there a way that I could eliminate all five of my cards? Sometimes there is, and that's really fun. And that is, of course, reserved for your students who already feel more comfortable at manipulating their, their numbers. I've written the steps out on the whiteboard here, and the black numbers represent the cards that I have. So let's do a very extreme. Now again, you don't always have to eliminate all of your cards. That doesn't even need to be a goal, but I just want to show you how very extreme this game can go. So here we go. We're going to try to eliminate all five cards. Seven minus two is five. Five times eight is 40. 40 divided by four is 10. And let's finish it up with 10 minus six is four. 
I just eliminated all of my cards. And again, this does not mean that I won the game or the game is over. It just means that my discard pile is looking quite plentiful right now. At which point I would replace all five of my cards and it's the other person's turn to go. Now you can use any operations you want, whichever ones your students know. You can even teach them to do exponents for your upper grade, your junior high, your sixth grade students. This could be a two cubed, or it could be a three squared. If you're working with high school students, your students in intro to algebra, freshmen, you could let them use factorials. There's no limit to the operations that your students can use. Now, let me explain to you why I have my students lay their cards out. Here's the idiom of the day. We're going to lay our cards out on the table, literally. So I guess it's not an idiom anymore. But anyway, this week I was playing Salute with my students. And if you haven't watched Salute, perhaps you'd like to go back and find that video. Salute is an ideal game for teaching multiplication and division facts and factors. And Eli and I were the soldiers and Brady was the general. And Eli and I were standing together waiting for Brady to say salute. And Eli said, Mrs. Mitsuda, I really struggled with, um, num uh, with hot cards this week. Now the word struggle is a very important word in my classroom because we learned from Joe Bowler that if we're not struggling, we're not learning. So throughout math lesson and in other lessons as well, I will hear the students say, oh, I'm really struggling with this. And it's always said in a positive way. So I said, Eli, I'm so glad you shared that with me. In what way were you struggling? And he said, I was really struggling with knowing what to do with my numbers, like what to do with my 11 and my 12. And, and I didn't know how to make it the number I wanted it to be. And then you know what he said? but Zoe helped me. Now, if Eli had had his cards like this, there would have been no opportunity for that kind of teamwork. But because his cards were transparent, they were out for everybody to see, Zoe took it on herself to help him manipulate his cards to achieve the goal of the number. You know, these games are very little about winning. I've been trying to think this weekend if I've ever heard my students this year say in one of our math games, I won, and I really can't remember ever hearing it. What I hear a lot is, oh, look at what I just did. Oh, Mrs. Matsuda, you won't believe what she just did. They want to talk to me about the moves that they make, the strategies that they use, but they never seem to be interested in telling me who won. Now, if we could just take that philosophy out to the soccer field, then I will be one extremely happier teacher. This is a number sense game when it's played this way. Number sense is a cornerstone to mathematic literacy. Just like phonemic awareness is the cornerstone to reading literacy, number sense is what we need to achieve in math. And you have students who are very adept at this already. But you know, number sense isn't something that you either have or you don't have. It's a skill that can be and must be taught. And what a beautiful way to practice number sense. I try to start every one of my math periods with some type of a hands-on activity. Or if I'm doing small group instruction, these activities can become part of the rotation. I know that there is someone who is watching this who may be feeling inadequate at math, like you're not a good math person. Maybe you feel like you're even not qualified to teach math because you struggle with math. What did we just learn today? Struggling is good. If we're not struggling, we're not learning. And this is a place where we can learn together. We can learn with our students. And how powerful a tool if we share those feelings that we have with our students and share with them that we are beginning to see ourselves as math people. 
Because remember, you are a NAP person and you are enough. And until we soon meet together again, goodbye.